A technology really lives in isolation, so we will now explore the technology ecosystem that surrounds OpenSplice IDS. OpenSplice IDS provides more or less six dimensions of technology ecosystem integration. It has an SDK, very rich SDK as we will see, MD, as well as platforms with respect to development, and then there are three other dimensions that actually help you with performance evaluation and characterization, connecting to technology and the deployment. So if we look at the development aspect, then we have SDKs covering development in C, C++, C Sharp, and Java. And we have also model-driven engineering tools with help you um, in modeling visually your application. They are Eclipse-based, and they've been proven to provide productivity up to 10x. Our deployment and development platform can be Linux, Windows, Solaris, AIX, VX, Works on Integrity. If we then move to the development deployment time, you will see that we have uh, performance characterization and modeling tools, as well as very rich statistics and reporting, connectors to databases and web services, as well as um, services that you typically would use to tuning your deployed system, logging and replay the data, and monitor at runtime. Now, we mentioned toward the beginning of this podcast that OpenSplice EDS complies with international standard, so it's about time to understand and discover which standards. OpenSplice EDS is an implementation of the Object Management Group, DDS, where DDS stands for Data Distribution Service for Real-Time Systems. The standard is really a leap forward in topic-based PubSub middleware, and um, it is characterized by both a wire protocol as well as an API standard. So if you look at the picture, at the bottom we see that there is a wire protocol interoperability standard called DDSI, and today we are at the version V2.1, and this requires as a basic assumption only the availability of UDP IP, and then on top of this, there is the API standard called DDS, and today we are at version V1.2. DDS is made of two macro layers, one called Data Centric Publish Subscribe and the other Data Local Reconstruction layer. The bottom layer, so the DCPS, provides you with um, basic PubSub over a distributed relational information model, while the Data Local Reconstruction layer, the DLRL, allows you to do object relational mappings, as we saw toward the beginning of this podcast. So, now, let's try to see you know, what are the performance that we can expect from this kind of technology. So in this graph, I'm showing you the throughput in terms of message per second, actually there are thousands of messages per second, that OpenSplice can deliver when batching messages into 8K byte messages, when running a single threaded application on a dual core Opteron and uh, on two machines connected by means of a gigabit Ethernet. So as you see, if we start off with 8 byte messages, we are not very far from 5 million messages per second. And we go down to um, 1.5 million messages per second for around 50 byte, and uh, over 1 million messages per second for 100 byte, getting down to, let's say, 418,000 messages per second for messages of 256 byte. Uh, if we look then at the red uh, curve, that shows the bandwidth utilization. And it's no surprise that with increasing message size, the bandwidth utilization grows up to practically saturating the gigabit Ethernet. So what you can see here is that we can really distribute massive amount of data, be very effective in utilizing available bandwidth, and by the way, the latency is minimal. This is really a ultra latency technology which provides you um, latency that are counted in microseconds as opposed in milliseconds. Okay, so it's time to conclude this podcast. If you are interested in learning more about OpenSplice EDS, please check out one of the white paper out of uh, the OpenSplice EDS website, or just take a look at one of the extended webcasts that I've recorded in the past. So, see you at the next podcast.